Hi guys, welcome back for another one. I am Mr. Free to Play. That is right, I'm a free to play player and I get free to play player advice, tips, tricks, and other things. It is that time again where I show you guys the players at home how you guys can net yourself at least a four star event campaign character for free, no money spent. So guys, if you're ready for it, sit back, relax, and let's get into it. The countdown to Stature's event is upon us, so it's time for me to review once again in detail this event campaign, characters recommended, and why I highly recommend this for a newer and mid-game players to focus on with your cores. In case it's the first time you're catching one of my videos, my method works best if you can clear the hard campaign, which you need to be level 60 or above. The more above, the easier these events get, and also the longer that you play, the easier these events get. Now there is a certain point where I no longer would recommend these events this way and probably start recommending spending straight up for the character, which I will cover later in this video. Either way, if you wanna to try to get yourself as many stature orbs or as many shards of stature as possible, my method as laid out will still work. In achieving that objective, you just won't get as much as someone who can clear the hard campaign. So let's begin reviewing the hard campaign. Recommendations, level 60 plus, even at level 60 flat, some of these events can be difficult. Now with ISOs being in the game, could be a game changer. So it could be even more doable with ISOs because you can get start getting ISOs. I believe at level 55, I didn't have time to fact check myself on that one right now, but I believe it's level 55. You guys can correct me down in the comments down below if that's not correct. Gear tier nine plus, I highly recommend gear tier 10 and above. And ability level five plus, and this is to me is six, 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 four abilities. Now you also need five aspiring characters for this event and I'm gonna review those here in a little bit. Now before I jump into my presentation, if you're someone who needs to know how you guys can find these tunes that have the aspiring tag, it's pretty simple. Just go to your filter bar, look for the tag aspiring, which I already have it clicked, and the characters pop up on your screen. And then you can start evaluating your characters from there, what you need to build, what you can use, maybe what ISOs you might wanna put on your characters, and I will get into that here in a little bit also. So first things first, day one of the event campaign. What you want to do is go through the hard campaign first, especially node one, because even if you can't clear node two, node one is usually clearable because they give you the tunes to clear that for you. You're not using your own roster, but then you want to start picking off and see if you can three star all the hard campaign because this method works at its optimal level if you can clear the hard campaign. Now there is another trick that a viewer in my last video pointed out Depending on your time zone and when game reset is for you, some of you players will be able to benefit from getting free energy as soon as the event goes live. For example, this event will go live at 7 p.m. for me, but my free energy rolls in at 6 p.m. So if I wait to claim my energy until after seven when the event goes live, I will get free energy for this event also at that time. So if you're someone that's in that time frame where those things line up, you have a huge advantage. And I'm just not sure if that works around the world. And I don't want to assume that it does without getting feedback from the players. Once you clear the entire hard campaign, then you want to start with the very last node and work your way down and just auto as much as you can. Now, every day at a minimum for a four star, you want to spend the 50 core refreshes. You can use it. You can do this four times a day at 50 cores and it costs you 200 cores a day. Those of you who've been watching for some time have seen my videos of me getting these characters at five star, five star, five star. At the end of this video, I will tell you guys how I get the five star, but I like to give you guys information that is reliable, that 99% of the player base that follows us to the T will get a four star scream. And there's probably an outlier that just gets terrible RNG. Anyways, keep going here. So starting with the second day and every day after, for this method to work, you have to make sure one, your energy campaign never sits full. Two, you must claim the free energy that comes in three times a day and use it right away. Cause your campaign energy will be full if you claim it and don't use it. And if you do that correct, by the end of the day, you will be left with these four nodes you guys see on my screen right now that need to be farmed. And that's where you'll spend your 50 cores to refresh and farm. And farms, in case some of you guys don't know the definition of that, is just basically going and clicking the node and hitting auto for all five tries or 10 tries, depending on the node. 
if you do this correctly, you will have a little bit of energy left over that you can go spend on the medium campaign. And I know there's a lot of information about the last three nodes here and the first three nodes of the medium campaign about the medium campaign giving you more. That's false. They give you the exact same. So these three nodes will give you the exact same ratio that the last three or the three hardest in the medium campaign give you too. So they're the exact same amount. And if you do this, you will earn yourself an extra one point and a little bit of a fraction extra orb a day, which can carry over when the event's done. Now these events typically run for 15 days. I've seen them run at 14 days, seen them run 16 days. It's always up in the air what they're gonna do. So usually 15 days is the standard. But once again, they could change it by there too, and we won't know until it goes live. Now, if you are someone that may wanna push to a five, which I know stature is not really the hot ticket in town. Uh, obviously they didn't boost her stats. I guess that has a lot to do with the dodge mechanic as they don't wanna make when you can finally touch her to not make her take forever to take down. But anyways, if you're interested in trying to push to a five, how I do that for you guys seeing my orb opening videos is also spending a hundred core refresh twice on the medium campaign. And I do that every day. And it usually nets me about 50 orbs and screaming net me 51. So I'm thinking that event ran its normal time and I was probably more on top of things than what I normally am and it got me 51 orbs instead of 50 orbs. Either way, I still netted myself a five star even though that was probably some of the worst RNG that luck that I've had open them. And those videos are on my channel. If you guys just want to look for them and research them up them yourself, you're more than welcome to. Anyways, let's keep going here. Let's begin with recommendations. So the characters that I recommend that you use for this. Now there's going to be two sets. First set here is simple. Young Avengers. It's the only complete team that's available with the aspiring tag. And then obviously you could just put in a fifth of your, the next best character you have as your fifth, or maybe even just a hero brawler in with Miss Marvel. You can run hero brawlers. They do have one downfall and that is healing, but that runs me into my next thing is a lot of times I always recommend that you guys find the healer in the bunch and then build a team around the healer. But thanks to a thing we like to call ISO now in a healer class, this is not as key as it used to be as you can just put healer on these characters. Could it be a waste of ISOs and probably more importantly ions? Yes, it could be. Because you can do this, I no longer need to go and find a healer of the bunch. I can just say, here are the 10 best characters. Pick your five that you want or the five you already have built up or the, you know, whatever you want to do. And these are the 10 best characters that are available with the aspiring tag. Science of Supreme, Loki, mainly because of his alt, not really anything else. His special, especially if Loki is like level 70, is not going to do that much damage. So it's basically his alt protecting your 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 guys because you want a three star. Baron Zemo, Anti-Venom, Scream, X-23, Falcon, Squirrel Girl, Crystal, and Electro. That's the best 10 that are available, in my opinion, that you guys can use for this event. And like I said, if you don't have a healer, you're gonna wanna use healer ISOs for your characters. Next up, we need to look at who's not in this orb. So obviously, every character that has the aspiring tag is also available in the orb except for a select few. So first off, Ghost and Yellow Jacket are not in this orb. And that's to be expected. But this is also a good sign that both of these characters will be released while this event's going on. We already know that Ghost is gonna get released next Wednesday to be purchased and probably a Blitz on Thursday, which is the quickest turnaround to a character being purchased and then being Blitz for. But it's also a 100 shard unlock. So not very many of the player base, especially the free to play player base, is gonna unlock Ghost on the first Blitz rotation because only the top 100 get those 100 shards. Moving on, next person, not an orb, Agent Coulson. Now I have a bone to pick with the devs and if you're a dev watching this, please share this one because this is one I don't get. Why when characters like Yo-Yo, Minerva, Agent Coulson, and now we'll throw in some of Spider-Man, have the aspiring tag, why are they excluded from the orb? They're not the majority drop. You're, most players will be lucky if they even drop once, maybe twice, and the amount of shards they get is not that much each drop. So I don't understand why having this orb would be game breaking other than you just want to be a prick. I don't know. But either ways, that's my soapbox getting off. Also not in the orb. She-Hulk, Anti-Venom and Scream. And in case you guys don't know how they usually run these events, it's always a bunch of newer characters mixed in with a few older characters that are available for this event. And that's mainly to increase spending for these events. And even though I don't think it gets the job done that they really want to get done or to stop us from hoarding and spending resources on them. I don't know what their method is, but they always seem to have a bunch of new characters for the event that are also not in the orbs. Now, here's another interesting thing to look at. Baron Zemo is not in the orb, but Electro 
and Swarm are, and you can see Baron Zemo came out in between these two characters. So this is a great indication that Baron Zemo will not be made farmable anytime soon. You most likely will get Swarm and Electro before Baron Zemo comes out. Just thought that was worth noting. Now the next thing to look at is obviously the value of these orbs. Let's start with characters that can help you unlock legendaries. So starting with Nick Fury, Kree Cyborg, Kree Reaper in the orb, Star-Lord, Drax and Mantis are in the orb, Doc Ock, Domino and X-23 in the orb, Ebony Maul, three of them are in the orb here, Miss Marvel, Crystal and Karnak. Nope, we're not done. Shuri, Miles Morales in his orb, probably not the one you're gonna use to unlock Shuri, but just saying he is there in the event that you get some kind of lucky orb spree with him and he just magically goes to seven before everybody else. Let's look at Shuri and Invisible Woman, Electro and Swarm. Now, once again, the other five Sinister Six members are so much easier to farm. So these two in the current game are probably not gonna be used, but you never know where the future holds or where these guys will end up. Cause obviously one of these end up in a blitz orb, for newer players down the road, one of them are gonna be more recommended than the one that's a campaign farmable. Moving on, Black Bolt, Sif, Black Bolt and Phoenix, Loki. So these are all the characters in the orb that help you towards a legendary. Moving on, characters that save you on arena and war credits, arena, aim researcher. So I don't know many people actually wanna farm aim researcher, so it definitely saves you there. Crystal and Drax, two characters that help you towards a legendary, definitely save you on that arena credit. And then Sif and X-23, available in the war store, saves you on those war currencies, and the less time you're pulling your hair out waiting for them to show up, especially when you actually need them to show up. Next up, characters that are currently unfarmable. Yes, there are characters that are currently unfarmable in the game in this orb, and that is Electro Swarm and Taskmaster. And then Domino for 99% of the player base, that basically says she is not farmable, is in this orb. All right guys, and that will do it. Not only have I showed you guys the method of how to get these event campaign characters at four stars or greater, I also showed you the value in these event campaign characters. Now, if you're someone who needs to evaluate your roster to know if you are a early mid game or late game player, or if this orb is worth it at all for you, if you should just spend, look at the characters that are in the orb. If you have a good amount of them at seven stars, my method may not be the most resource efficient for you. You may be better spending your cores in campaign nodes versus this event, but this event I find way more value for early and mid game players. Now, if you are consider yourself late game or this orb is not worth it, still go in and use your energy as you get it throughout the day and all the free energy you get during your energy refreshes as it'd be foolish not to take advantage of free resources. If you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new here and have not done so already, hit that subscribe button. And if you don't wanna miss the next event campaign character, how to get them at four stars or more, or the orb opening to see if I can keep getting these characters at five stars, hit that notification bell. And with all that said, I will catch you guys on the next one. If you guys are out there wondering why I didn't do my high, medium, and low usage characters for this event, it's mainly because my resource management is going through an overhaul right now. And until that's complete, I don't feel right giving you guys recommendations when I know the meta is changing and I'm currently trying to factor that in. Don't worry, resource management will be back once the dust has settled on all the new game modes. And the whales tell us to take Ghost in Dark Dimension 3 when they have them at seven gold, six red, and the rest of us are sitting here with a three star.